The first place to start with decluttering when you are overwhelmed and don't know where to start is with medium sized items. And I used to say large items, but the problem with decluttering furniture is that one, it can be too heavy for one person to lift and it can also be full of clutter. So if it's a shelf or a dresser, then it probably has a lot of stuff in it if you're just beginning to declutter. And it's also helping keep that stuff as vertical storage space instead of taking up space all over the floor and across the room. So I think it's helpful to keep those items until later on once you've gotten further in the decluttering process. So what I mean by medium size items is stuff like clothing, jeans, jackets, coats, or sheets, blankets, pillows, and even for furniture, it could be stuff like chairs. You can lift those by yourself and they usually don't have a lot of stuff, at least like kitchen chairs or something like that. Um, or maybe like an ottoman. So you can keep that in mind. The reason we start with medium sized items is that they do take up a lot of space. And so when you get rid of 10 medium sized items, that frees up a lot more space than 10 small items. But it basically uses the same amount of brain power or sometimes less. So let me just show you visually and describe that for you. Okay, so if you are going through a large pile of papers, you are probably reading them, trying to figure out what it is. Do you want to keep it or not? You may be sorting different piles. This is for this person. This is something I need to deal with now. This is for later. A lot of it is sentimental stuff. And so maybe you get rid of eight pieces of paper, but it probably takes you a long time. But if you go in your linen closet or throughout your house or your clothing and gather eight medium sized items that are easy to instantly know what they are, then in making eight of those same decisions, you're getting rid of this many things and this much space rather than this much. So, woo. so that's why it's so helpful and important to start with those types of things. And I'm just gonna sit here on my pillows now. So you can more quickly see the difference in your home once those items are gone, rather than just recycling a few pieces of paper. Okay, the second thing to do is surround yourself with decluttering inspiration and ideas. So it doesn't have to be a physical reminder, but you can buy one decluttering book. It doesn't have to be 10 but one physical book or get it from the library to keep in your space and read throughout the weeks or months that you're trying to declutter, but also just having it. And I like to get one with a pretty cover so that you can keep it sitting out where you can see it and it gets you excited about decluttering. But another important way to provide inspiration is of course watching YouTube videos that talk about decluttering or listening to podcasts or audiobooks or even watching TV shows or signing up for an email list where they are sending you an article about decluttering every week or so. Wherever you are spending your time, Instagram accounts that talk about decluttering, 
then you will go there and see those things and be reminded of them and be able to read them and get quick tips that help make it easier and faster to declutter when you are to that point. And the good thing about a lot of those digital ways of being reminded is that even when you're not home, you'll be able to work on decluttering when you can't physically work on it at home and get rid of stuff. You're at least collecting those ideas that make it more exciting for once you do have the time to declutter. And the third one sounds kind of mean, but let me explain. This one is to make it less overwhelming, which sounds like, oh yeah, well, if it wasn't overwhelming, then I would just do it. And that's exactly the point. So some ways that you can make it less overwhelming are to get a small box or container of items and take it into a different room or outside if your whole house is overwhelming and cluttered. And you're then you're not distracted or overwhelmed or feeling so bad about the clutter. You're just focusing on that small amount. And another thing you can do is if stuff is just sprawled all over the place is just like scoot it to the side or, you know, pile it together so there's more open space. And if there are things like trash or dirty dishes or things that are just out of place and they have a different room that they belong in, then you could collect those things and especially trash because that really gets it out of your way. But Sorry, honestly, I recorded this video and another one and somehow my camera got on a setting that's like slow motion. Didn't even know I had that setting until I was going to edit these. So my hair was looking better before, but anyway. So also if you just work on one tiny section a day for three months, then that's 90 containers or sections of your home that you're going through. And even if you just do every other day, that's almost 50. So I am currently doing a series about becoming clutter free by Christmas. And so all of these videos are meant to help with reaching that goal. So I have a playlist specifically just for that to walk you through step by step. And this month is about clothing. And that's partly because clothing is one of those medium sized items. And most of it is not so sentimental. It's easier and less expensive to replace unless you are really into designer clothes, which I am not, obviously. <laughs> and another tip for this that kind of goes along with making it less overwhelming is something that I actually learned from being an author is that you want to end your workday or your writing session or your decluttering session by setting yourself up for the next session. And so the next time you are ready to declutter, you have time to declutter, you will, like there's not as much of a barrier between you and getting that started. So for writing, I could be working on a chapter and then I get to the end and I write just one line that leads into the next chapter and how I want to start that next chapter. And so when I come back to my computer and I'm looking at it, then I know, oh yeah, that's what I'm gonna write about next. Or even if I just put like the topic, like a, a title, like a working title for the next chapter, that would be enough as well. So some things that you can do for decluttering is to have a list of three things that you want to work on next, and then you can come back and choose from those three, whichever one sounds the most exciting in the moment, or especially if they would take differing amounts of time. So maybe a five minute task, a 10 minute task, and a 30 minute task. And depending on how much time you have to work on it, you can choose which task. Another thing you could do if you are 
trying to go through one box a day or one area a day or one bag a day, go and get that bag once you finish going through the other bag and go ahead and have the next bag ready and sitting out in a different spot waiting for you so you can just go straight to that and you know and you're not having to look at everything and choose from there. And I already did a video on the 30 day method which is really the starting point for becoming clutter free in about six months. So if you haven't seen that one, go watch it and it will explain a lot to help you get started methodically without skipping or missing anything. So I will link to that in the description if you want to join, that would be super fun.